Hi guys. Um, I wanted to, I've had this message on my heart actually for quite a long time. I have shared it before on my Facebook page and to be quite frank with you, nobody seems interested. Um, but yet the Lord won't let it go from my heart. So I just have to accept that if God is putting this on my heart, that maybe this message isn't just for me because I already received this message. Um, how in the world I seem to be the one that's going to talk about it, I don't really know. I'm not qualified, but sometimes God doesn't want the qualified. He wants those that are willing, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm not qualified. I'm not justified in any way, shape, fashion, or form. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a Bible teacher. I'm not any of those things except any more than or any less than any of us are supposed to be. Bear with me because I, while I may be a wordy person and say a lot, it doesn't always mean that I say it in the right way. So hopefully this will come through the way the Lord intends it to and will land in the heart or hearts that is supposed to relieve, uh, receive it. Um, the Bible says that God's word will not return into him void and that it will be received. It will, it will go where it's intended. So that means it's not my responsibility to plant that in the hearts of anyone. This is, God will put it where it's supposed to go, if it's supposed to go anywhere. So, um... Ephesians 5.11 All of us have heard it. It has became, become, in my opinion, and from what I feel like the Lord is showing me, it has become a battle cry and a bartering ram in a way that will actually become a stumbling block to many. Now before... All of you already think that she has no clue what she's talking about. I don't, but the Bible does. Let me read Ephesians 5.11. I'm going to re read this in two different versions. The first one is in the King James, and then the second of that verse is in the New International Version. In King James says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, here's the exact same verse in the New International Version. 5.11, Ephesians 5.11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Okay, two totally different words that actually have or can have two completely different um, applications. The word reprove, which is in the King James Version, is a verb according to Merriam-Webster, and it means to scold or correct, usually gently or with kindly intent. Or it can, to, it can be to express disapproval or censure, to disabuse, uh, disprove or refute something. Now, the word expose, um, this is a intrasensitive oh. verb. Oh, no, that's expose. One, verb, it's a verb. One is make something visible by uncovering it. And as an example, they say, at low tide, the sands are exposed. That's one example of expose. Number two is reveal the true objectionable nature 
of someone or something. He has been exposed as a liar and a traitor. I looked up, <clears throat> just out of curiosity, there's one of those, I can't remember if it's Bible proof, I, I don't know what it was, but they have a whole bunch of different interpretations. You can enter in any verse and it brings up a whole lot of different translations. Do you know the word expose is in uh, the NIV, it's in the Living New Living Translation, the English Standard Version, uh, the Berean Standard Bible, the Berean Literal Bible, the New King James Version, the New American Standard Bible, the NASB version of 1995 and the NASB of 1977. It's in the Legacy Standard Bible. Uh, it's in the Amplified Bible. It's in the Christian Standard Bible. In other words, it's in almost every Bible. That word is in almost, expose, is in almost every translation except the King James Version, which I just read, that says reprove. And in the American Standard Version, it says, but rather even reprove them. And in the Aramaic Bible, in plain English, it uses the word re rebuke them. Um... And then in the contemporary English version, it just says, instead, show how wrong they are. All right. I think it's, I'm wondering, I don't know. I, I find it strange in some ways that we choose the word expose. And expose can have a good meaning, but then again, it can also have a very harsh and judgmental meaning. And I'll give you two examples. I think in the Great Commission, when the Bible tells us to spread the gospel and tell others about the good news, another way of saying that is we could expose Jesus. We could expose Jesus, shed light on Jesus, show the truth with Jesus the and what he means and what this whole thing is, or we can turn it into something awful like that preacher is a blasphemer and a false teacher and a yada yada we need to expose him have you ever on your own read ephesians 5 in context let's read it shall we in context let's see what in context is said here and for the ease of um understanding my go-to version is normally the king james but i'm going to go ahead and read this one in the uh, new international version ephesians 5 i'm starting verse 1 bear with me someone is supposed to hear this god forgave you follow god's example therefore as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. 
Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Now here's verse 11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Um, there's more to this, but hopefully I've said enough. Understand what this is saying, not in one single verse of those 14 verses I just read says expose them, expose the preachers, the Christians. It's talking about expose the evil deeds. But yet, and I know you know what I'm talking about, we have groups on Facebook, we have groups on YouTube, that basically their entire channel is exposing all the false teachers. That is not what is said here in that verse. We have taken that one verse and, like I said, turned it into a battering ram. And my fear and what I feel like the, the Holy Spirit has put on my heart, and I can't possibly be the only one that he's putting this on the heart of, I worry that in us pointing this preacher's pointing to that preacher, this other evangelist is pointing at this one, what we have done, maybe with the best of intentions, is we are creating confusion among the children, and I'm not talking little actual children, all of us, the day that we accept Christ as our Savior, the, the day we become born again, we are a child at that moment. We have, it's a rebirth. We don't know everything that we need to know on that day. We grow in the, in the same way that us in our human forms begin in preschool or kindergarten and then we go up through the first grade and up through the 12th grade and some go to college well let me explain to you especially fellow believers what I knew in first grade is nothing near the same as what I thought and I knew and I understood at 10th grade or whenever I graduated or the little bit of um um, community college that I had. We grow. We're supposed to grow as Christians. Let me tell you what we're making this confusing. I know myself, and I was kind of raised in the church, even though I, I left God, I kind of turned my back on God. Then I come back in, and it's like we're in a bad political movie or something. And you've got these politicians and I'm going to use them for an example, that their whole platform is not to say what they are good at, but they're showing you how Joe is bad or their running mate is bad. They're running off of the badness of someone else. Um, and we brought that into the church. Instead of it, we're so busy pointing out everything that is different between this preacher or that preacher, that we're in our attempt to expose the fruitless deeds, we're throwing confusion all across to people that are either not Christians at all yet, or they're baby Christians, and we are causing confusion. You know what the Bible says? God is not the author of confusion. And if you think that I'm making this up or over-dramatizing, 
then pray about it and think about this. There's people that are afraid of they're going to choose the wrong religion. They're afraid they're going to choose the wrong whatever. Um, I want to read this verse too because I felt like the Lord put this on my heart. Matthew 18 verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of its uh, because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. We, as I mentioned before, each person that accepts Christ is like a babe, a newborn. We are spreading confusion in our efforts. I think our hearts are good when we're trying to expose this, that, and the other. But the thing is, we are actually becoming stumbling blocks to people. I truly believe this with all my heart. If we spent as much time exposing Jesus... And I mean as in the, it's meant to be exposed. Shine light on Jesus. Tell who Jesus is. But no, so many people today want to do an expose about this preacher's bad, that one's bad. And we're just assuming that their hearts are bad. That is not for us. That is not for us. The Bible does not say, take that preacher and throw him under the bus. There actually is a biblical way that these things are supposed to happen. You want to know what that is? Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say to you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall loose ye shall loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it should be done for them. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. First Timothy 5.17 Let the elders that rule well be counting, counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. You know where this is? It's not talking YouTube. It's not talking about going on the uh, Facebook. It's not talking about taking out an ad in the newspaper paper, or putting it on television for the world to see. This is within the church. God is talking to the church. If you, and I know, I've already heard the arguments. They'll say, well, that preacher preached that um, in public, so he needs to be called down in public. Um, excuse me, that is not what the Bible says. But now, if that's what you feel that you are called to do, then by all means do it. But that's not what the Bible is saying. There's a way to do this. How is a lost person going to understand the nuances of these things. We are literally putting it out there to anyone who will listen that this preacher is bad. Well, this, did you know that I said earlier that the Bible says that God's word, 
his word, the Bible, shall not return to him void. So if any man is preaching from the word, reading the word, it doesn't mean that he is going to do all things perfectly. Um, in fact, I want to go a little bit further that I feel like the Lord put this on my heart. <coughs> Excuse me for that. Um, I'm still getting over this mess. I can't tell you how many times I myself have said and other people have said, God knows my heart. Well, I only brought up one verse right now. There are a bunch. Let me tell you what the Bible says about the heart. The heart is supposed to be so pure. Now, yeah, this was in Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. You know what the Bible says? The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The Lord searcheth, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to his conduct, according to what their deeds um, deserve. Okay. When did God appoint you or me? What qualifies me or you to say the heart of... I'm just going to choose a name. Because I've done this too, okay? I, I am guilty of this too. That's why God put the message on my heart first and once, once I've got it. But I can't really say that Joel Osteen or that um, Kenneth Copeland or I can't. I don't know their hearts. Now do I? How do I possibly know their hearts? I cannot tell you. There are so many people that have um, channels on YouTube that are basically clickbait by calling and saying, uh, Pastor, this and this and that and the other is, um, he's false and he's this, that and the other. Well, let me say, there's actually verses in the Bible that says a man who is called to preach should have one wife. And they use that to mean, <coughs> excuse me, and it may mean exactly this. It They use it to mean that any man that has ever been divorced is not worthy to be a preacher. I can't say for 100, I can say the Bible does say that. Is that what it's meant in context? No, I don't, I can't say that. But there's preachers out there that are preaching today that have been divorced and remarried. Um, it probably is better if they weren't. There's the Bible. I can show you in the Bible, too, that the Bible will say that um, a woman should never have a position of authority over a man in the church, that God is the head um, and Jesus is the head of the church in the same way that the husband is the head of the family. And if you take it literally, then there should be no women preachers. I'm not going to condemn every woman preacher. I'm going to let God handle that. Um, I also know that my Bible says to commit adultery is sin. To commit fornication is sin. To commit... Um, lies and any other evils. There's not a perfect person among us. So if you really wanted to get down to it, there's a Bible verse or, or so that says that a man who does not even have his own home in order, in other words, he may have a wayward son, a wayward daughter, that maybe he should not be a preacher because he can't keep his own house in order. I guess what I'm saying is if you're going to judge each preacher that seems to preach or teach something differently than what you believe, make sure that your house is clean, that you're not throwing a rock through a glass plate window. Because last time I checked, I'm a sinner. 
I may be a sinner saved by God, but I'm still a sinner. And if you are a, even a person saved by God, you also are still a sinner. So be very careful because I'm going to tell you, I just read you the verses. It's going to be better for you that something is tied around your neck and you're cast into the sea rather than become a stumbling block. The day that you become perfect, then pick up that stone and throw it. Otherwise, how about use some of that exposure and expose Jesus? Then let Jesus Christ, the Savior, the one who died for us, who bled for us, then let him, once someone has become saved, in the same way that Jesus and the Holy Spirit taught you the difference between the real Jesus and the fake Jesus and the real gospel and the fake one, don't you think he can do the same with the fake news? Stop becoming a stumbling block. Expose Jesus. Share Jesus. We've got people so confused, they don't know if they're going or coming or even want to be a Christian. Uh, the best I can say is please pray about this and then follow what God says. You and I and all of us will answer. If what we are saying is so confusing to some people that they would rather not accept Christ as their Savior because they look upon us people that call ourselves Christians and we fight amongst ourselves and each other, why in the world would anyone want that? So instead of acting like a bunch of twisted politicians that you're going to just put down this preacher and that preacher and this other, why don't you just expose Jesus, tell of Jesus, share Jesus, and let him take it from there. Pray to those that need help. There's a way to doing this and blasting it all over Facebook and YouTube and smite thy like button and calling every name out, that is not what is said. I, I've repented for it because I have done this same thing myself. So expose God. Reprove, reprove some and help them in maybe the ways to do it and help your brother as they stumble. This isn't just, oh my goodness, and, and the world is eating this up. Satan is eating this Bible verse up by taking it out of context and beating people over the head with it. I am even confused, and I've been a Christian for quite a while. Stop it. Now, if God is putting on your heart for a particular something, then do it. Always follow the Lord. Love you guys. Um, I probably haven't said anything like I was supposed to say. I don't know why I get so nervous, but I just do. Always listen to God. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. We are all fallible. And until we draw our last breath, each and every one of us can do wrong, has gone wrong, will do wrong again. Love you guys. Christ loves you so much. He died for you. Expose him. Quit crucifying everybody that believes differently than you. Share gospel. How about that? Take care. Love you.